Tech is a bi-weekly podcast exploring the intersections of technology and ministry. It is part of the podcast network sponsored by Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Our show today is hosted by Martin Spriggs and Sally Draper. Welcome back to Wells Tech, everybody. This is episode 720, that's 720, and we're recording on March 14th, 2024. That is a Thursday morning, and joining me on that Thursday morning, me being Mark Spriggs, you being Sally Draper. Hey, Sally. Here I am by, um, I don't know, by the luck of plugging in a different microphone. I made it. My webcam is on. We're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Zoom challenges today. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at the date. Is today Pi Day or is that, um, that's in two days? No, today's yeah. Pi Day. 3.141569. Yeah. I don't know what after that, but yeah, yeah. happy Pi Day. Yeah. The um, What's the topic today, Sally? We've got a topic. I know we do. We do. I'm super excited because we have a really great interview to share. And the topic around that interview is about messaging, about communication, about using technology to make connections. And the people making the connections are on our one Latin America team. And so I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Yeah, we're talking to John Gross and Grace Ungamot. Uh, Grace works for Tell, the Tell Network. You might have heard about that. And John works for Academia Cristo. And um, that's uh, in the um, multi-language productions area. So uh, they've been actually in uh, on our Wells blogs quite a bit lately. I think there was a together video on them and with good reason because they are um, – they're producing uh, some good stuff and some useful technologies that they've put together and figured out uh, how to pivot when necessary. Um, you'll hear that in the interview as well. So let's have a listen to a great interview we had with John and Grace. We are so happy to have a couple of guests with us today. Uh, Grace Ungemacht. Marketing Operations Manager for Tell Network, and John Gross, Field Producer for MLP, uh, the LA1 or Latin America One team. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a little while, so I really appreciate you guys doing this. Um, Maybe we just start by a quick intro. Ladies first, just introduce yourself to our listeners, background, hobby, Anything short of your life story would be fine. Just to let us know who uh, who Grace Ungamot is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm a, an MLC grad who made a career, career switch uh, into marketing. I worked for a couple small businesses for a while. I got into freelancing um, digital marketing for Wells churches and schools, um, and I'm blessed to be coming up on two years with with MLP and with Tell Network. Um, personally, I, I always say, I think I've lived in the Midwest too long when I start talking about weather, but, um, I'm a big (laughs) runner, a big runner. So I'm really grateful for this warm winter we've been experiencing in, in Wisconsin. Um, we're here because my husband is a senior at the seminary. Um, so we're looking forward to May when we'll find out where, where we'll be permanently. Awesome. That's already time. got that figured out. So that's the good news. True statement. <laughs> awesome. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Grace. How about you, John? What's your story? Yeah, I'm also a NLC grad. I taught at Luther Prep, and then I also taught at St. Marcus, and then I moved to uh, Chile. And I lived in Chile for seven years, and I started a YouTube channel uh, while I was teaching in the rural schools there. And I began to uh, gain a lot of followers, and um, I have over 100,000 followers on YouTube. And then I had my own national television program uh, in Chile. And um, and Academia Cristo found me while I was making YouTube videos and asked me if I could help a little bit. And so I did a couple of trips with them. 
and got more and more involved. And then um, I eventually started doing full-time work for multi-language productions. And now I do all video and uh, website work and everything with WhatsApp, anything that is the top of the hourglass, we say, with uh, Academia Cristo, I'm in charge of. My wife uh, does all of the women's ministry for um, the 1LA team. And so we moved from Chile to uh, Quito to be able to travel more and be uh, closer to the airport as we both uh, travel quite frequently to visit different people in Latin America. Cool. Just curious, what kind of YouTube content were you producing? All sorts of things showing Chile in English uh, as I traveled uh, throughout the country. I was blessed to be able to see many different places and meet different people and try a lot of uh, bread in, in, in Chile. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Fun stuff. Well, um, maybe we'll talk about both of those. Um, I have websites up, so I'll share. Um, perhaps, John, you can start by telling us just a little bit about Academia Cristo and who your audience and goals are with that site and what parts of this you touch, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, Academia Cristo really started because in Mexico, we had missionaries years ago, and they had issues with drugs, and they still do. I just saw that uh, two mayors uh, were just assassinated in, in Mexico. And uh, there were some missionaries that just had to leave quickly. So they decided to do everything digitally. And so um, right here, you can see the what had started in 2015 when we pulled our missionaries to now. Uh, we have a website, so we have um, live classes. So uh, right at the beginning, we just decided, oh, we're just gonna invite everybody to a live Zoom. And we had uh, over a thousand people coming on to a live Zoom, which is just a mess. And so we started to make an app. And so this was our start to the filter process of making an app so that people would have to go through it. And um, and now we have, uh, you can see uh, frequently asked questions and um, we have different uh, courses on addiction. So this is on uh, pornography that we worked with Time of Grace to make. Um, we have different courses on Mormonism because um yeah the mormon culture here is pretty big um and then the most important thing is at the very top we have our discipleship courses these are all of our live courses uh that we offer to our students here and the idea is that they start with a big broad app which right now is whatsapp that we'll talk about and then they move into live classes and then after that they get a, a counselor that meets with them and helps them and they come into doctrinal agreement with us. And the big goal is for them to start a congregation in their own community. And that's what, what we are trying to do is start congregations throughout all of Latin America. Very exciting. Um, Grace, how about you? What is TELL and what, what kind of things are you producing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tell was born far before my my time with MLP, but it was really born out of uh, seeing what Academia Cristo was doing and saying, okay, let's let's take that and let's put it in English. Um, English is widely spoken around the world. It really opens up um, our audience uh, super wide, <laughs> which is such a blessing to try to figure out how to reach um, people across the world from all different cultures. Uh, with the same language. So uh, most of our students are second language English speakers, which has presented a whole new set of, of challenges and opportunities for us to communicate with them. Um, kind of our, our avatar, as, as we call it, or like our ideal student, kind of the person that we advertise to, um, is uh, between like 25 and 45, a male who has some sort of interest in theology education, right? Because that's really what we do. Um, they start out with a set of videos that they watch on their own and a quiz. Um, and if they complete that, then they get invited into live classes. Um, the thing that makes us a little bit different from Academia Cristo is that our live classes are taught by predominantly parish pastors, um, who volunteer their time to do this. So very cool. We have instructors all across the country, um, all across the world, who take a few hours out of their week to get on Zoom and teach these people from, from all across the globe. So uh, very similar to Academia Cristo, um, but some unique um, opportunities with that 
that English aspect uh, and globally too. You work with specific fields. I know you've worked in Africa, you've worked in Asia uh, and yeah. Latin, in Latin America. Uh, not so much Latin America. Okay. We've we've dabbled um, a little bit. Most of our students, 90% of our students right now are in Africa somewhere, okay. <laughs> really spread um, across uh, the continent. Uh, probably 8% of our students are from Asia. Uh, we're so really just looking getting to get started. Into, okay. into Asia uh, this year, seeing what, what opportunities we have in, in different countries over there. But it's really interesting to try to explore um, the unique pieces of each culture and to try to market um, to those very, very different places in the world, the same product. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's fun to get into that and dial in that uh, messaging for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you both kind of had a similar path or some similar decision making, I think. Uh, you both started with an app and decided that there were other technological solutions that might work better, at least on your front end, your pre, I don't know if you call it pre-evangelism or not, but basically on that introduction to Christ and Christology. Tell us a little bit about what led you to the decision to use a product called respond.io and a little bit about that process and maybe some other things that you considered. Um, Grace, maybe you, uh, you want to start? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, when I came on, uh, our primary plan was to use the app, get people to download the app, watch the videos, take the quizzes in the app. Um, and we were really seeing a challenge for our students, specifically in Africa. Um, you know, it takes data to download an app and, and to watch videos in an app. Um, it takes a phone that's of a certain, um, mm -hmm. like, a, a new enough phone to be able to download the app version that we were offering. Um, and we could see that that just wasn't working for our students. So um, came up with the idea to say, let's make a landing page on our website. Let's run all of our ads to that landing page. And the landing page is going to tell them, hey, if you want to become a student, message us on WhatsApp. Um, WhatsApp is not as popular in the United States, but across the world, you could think of it as like our iMessage or our texting you know, it's the thing that people check when they wake up in the morning. It's kind of, you know, their their attention is there. So message us on WhatsApp. And this just blew up uh, to an extent that is just crazy. Um, I remember me and, and my coworker, Amory, uh, you know, settled into into work and opened up WhatsApp on my computer. And, and you see the little <laughs> the, the red notification that says 999 plus uh, unread messages. <laughs> And, and we're kind of like, okay, <laughs> this is, this is our job for today. Uh, I guess we're going to, we're going to send a lot of videos and a lot of quizzes. Um, but at the end of the day, that just wasn't sustainable, obviously. Um, uh, so we needed to find a solution and, and WhatsApp offers an API, um, which is basically like the, the machinery that, that runs the messages that sends them from, from my computer to somewhere in Africa. Um, that you can pay for that allows you to automate things, which is amazing. Um, but you can't just use an API. You need like a front end um, that you can that you can interact with. So picture like uh, Gmail has an API, right? Um, but it would be useless if you didn't have the the blue compose button or the reply button or or things like that. So Respond.io offers that that front end for the WhatsApp API. Super user friendly, um, just just awesome to use. They're based out of Malaysia, um, and they offer their their back end of their service in a bunch of different languages. So it works for all of our world fields, um, and it helps us to automate a lot of that back and forth conversation. So then it's scalable. We can advertise to as many people as we want, um, and we don't have to spend our entire day sending those one on one back and forth messages. Mm -hmm. So. That's how cool. we got into it at first. John, similar story for you? Yeah, I would say it's a little bit different because Tell started it. Um, so Grace built it for Tell. And then um, if you start at the bottom of the hourglass for Academia Cristo, our goal is in 10 years to have 1,000 church plants here in Latin America. 
And so we were, we we're right around 30, um, a little over 30 church plants right now, uh, in Latin America, which, which is great. But you think about then a thousand, uh, in about nine more years. That's a lot. Um, and as technology changes, you always want to try and figure out what's going to work, what's going to get you to that end goal. And the native app was working fine. Uh, we were okay with it. Um, but the numbers for the native app and the price for the native app and also working with advertising with Facebook changing and the SDKs always changing and things like that, uh, we were realizing that we could reach a lot more people like what Tel was doing by using Respond.io. 98% of people in Latin America use WhatsApp and it's a natural fit as all of our communication is with WhatsApp anyways. And so instead of having to download something and start something new, why don't we just use what somebody already is using to reach the people for a fraction of a penny? Oh, cool. That's awesome. So we kind of have a picture of how it works from how Grace explained it so well. That's a really neat explanation of, of APIs and how they um, share the load with you and stuff. And the concept of you having 999 plus <laughs> now is distilled down, I'm assuming, to much more manageable as as it continues to grow. So I'm assuming you've seen some blessings from this. What kind of real world stories can you share with us about the blessings of this? Yeah, setup? yeah, absolutely. It is just incredible um, to see how these, these, this technology has really enabled us to reach more people. Back when, when my coworker and I were sending these messages one-on-one -on -one to people, you know, we could only advertise so much. Um, because we could only get so many leads before, you know, our work day was just <laughs> zapped. Um, but now that limit just does not exist, which is incredible. So um, on average, we bring in 100 new students every week into live class. So 100 people who have finished those introductory videos and quizzes, who can then join um, a theologically trained pastor on Zoom and start learning. Um, and then that, you know, that number kind of trickles down and we lose some people as the courses go on, which is natural. Um, but we're looking forward to by the end of the year having roughly 150 students reach the counselor stage. So kind of the advanced stage of our program where they start talking about um, planting a group, growing a group, leading those people in Bible study and worship. So we see, you know, it takes about a year to get the new students through the program to that counselor stage. So we're looking forward to um, to some real growth uh, for that part of the program. I would and piggyback on, on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say um, something um, that is very different from the native app that we've used for years and now going into Respond.io, which is a systemated way of sending messages through WhatsApp. It's a live, it's like a living and breathing machine. So you can look into Respond.io. You can see exactly where people are. Um, there are missionaries that are taking it and you can kind of look at the missionary and you can see where they're at in the system and they're on course three and they're stuck in there, something happens and you can restart them. In a native app, you have no idea. They're just in, we call it a black box that you can't look inside of. But right now in Respond.io, it's a glass box. You can look and you can see exactly what's going on in there. Uh, you can find any student. Right now we're doing um, promos to Puerto Rico and we wanna see how many people are on the island studying. And I just looked in the middle of a, a meeting yesterday, there are 35 people in Puerto Rico that are studying and they are actively studying and you can see exactly what lesson they're on. Um, whereas the native app, you just guess, you know, oh, we had six finishers this week. Okay, where are the rest of them in the system? We don't really know. It's a black box. Um, so that's a huge advantage that we have now in seeing and helping people within the system. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Technical question before we ask for some application, maybe stateside application from your perspectives. How does the material come across? Is it as an attachment in WhatsApp? Is it inline text? What is that experience like for the for the uh, studier? Yeah, student. yeah, yeah. So uh, the student receives a link to a YouTube video, um, but depending on on their phone, they can either watch in WhatsApp or it takes them to the page on YouTube. Um, once they watch the YouTube video, it waits uh, to send the next message for however long the YouTube video was. So give them eight minutes to watch the video, 
and then it'll start sending quiz questions. So congrats, you finished the video. Please answer these three questions. It'll say the question and then it'll have buttons uh, right in there that people can select, select their answer. It'll tell them whether or not it was, it was correct and move them along um, like that. And then once the quiz is complete, they'll send the next, the next video. Okay. And then the bandwidth concerns of Africa, that has not been a barrier then to, to, to do video that way? No, no. YouTube has um, a lot of capabilities to kind of adjust Compress quality it, right? based on, mm -hmm, yep, exactly, based on the bandwidth of someone's internet. So nice. YouTube is a good tool to use for that. Cool, cool. So let's talk a little bit about application. I know that our listeners are probably wanting, eh, this sounds pretty cool. Would this work? in applications in a local congregation, you know, whether that be for Bible information class or other outreach kinds of purposes, pre-evangelism or otherwise. Have you guys thought about that at all? And what advice might you give to a local congregation or school? Yeah, we had talked a little bit about this um, uh, before coming on to the podcast. And um, we were thinking that, uh, well, Grace is going to marry a pastor and she looks at him and how much time he spends uh, talking to an individual person rather than building a system that could just send a message to your whole entire congregation with one little click. And then I was thinking, what if a, a district were to take advantage of Respond.io? And instead of going door to door and reaching out and canvassing to people or planning for an event like a, a soccer camp or something like that, what if you just built a workflow in Respond.io that maybe it's not with WhatsApp, but Respond.io also works with Facebook Messenger. And you reach the entire community right on their couch without even you know hitting their door. You hit them on their phone and then they sign up to be a part of this soccer camp. That way you have so much more time to plan for a great soccer camp instead of going door to door and walking around and trying to invite people who might not even be in their home at that time. So I could see this being a huge use for for wells in the United States. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that's an awesome idea. Um, and another thing to note is it doesn't just work for WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, but you can also hook it up with an SMS provider or texting. Um, so WhatsApp is big uh, globally, but texting is kind of the thing that, you, that you'd want to do here. Um, and it has that capability as well. And cost effective? Uh, that would be a question that a lot of congregations would have. How much does it cost? Yeah, yeah, great question. We are on a, a big plan. We bring, you know, a lot of traffic in that probably, you know, wouldn't be necessary for an individual congregation or even a district. Their lowest plan is $75 a month, which I think allows you a thousand contacts, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and then something like an SMS provider or um, you know, Facebook Messenger, I think, is free, but SMS is really minimal, um, you know, $10 for a thousand messages, roughly, uh, what have you. So fairly cost effective if it's going to if it's going to save you um, that much time mm -hmm. um, or that much energy, for sure. All right, guys. Well, you sold me. It sounds like it's working really wonderfully in your different settings. That's so neat to hear about. And yeah, I love the ideas for local congregations as well. Um, how about you give us a little look into the future? What are you guys working on for TEL and for Academia Cristo? Any other technologies in the mix? You know, what's coming next? Yeah, yeah, I like this question. Um, for me, uh, I'm working on a counselor information system right now to keep everybody on the same page about all the students that we have coming through the program. Um, so to keep our registrar uh, in communication with our missionaries, our world fields, um, I'm, I'm using a tool called UI Bakery. Basically allows you to create any any user interface UI that you uh, can dream up. So that's my big project right now. Uh, John, how about you? Yeah, I always think human interaction is the best thing. So I'm, you know, the whole point of this is so that we can be interacting with people in person. So we visit people often. So I don't want anybody to think that that's not the point here. The whole point of using technology is to be with people in person um, and help them and motivate them and give them God's word and you know give them the sacraments in person when they've reached that level. Um, but technology is really a bridge to get you there. 
and you can reach so many people. I was just amazed by when I was doing my YouTube channel uh, in 15 hours, I had reached uh, 400,000 people with one video about me walking across the street and talking about bread, you know, and you can do that with technology. And something I'm passionate about is trying to figure out what's next. Um, so one thing that I, I want to do is get to the CES conference in Las Vegas, try and figure out what's new with um, VR systems and uh, how we can reach more people in the future. What is next? Um, and how do we use that uh, in world missions, but also in the wells in general? How do we get to people that are on their couch or that are, uh, no, I don't know, anywhere in the world? And how do we reach them in person through technology? So cool. Well, you guys really appreciate uh, what you do. It's fun, exciting to watch God use the gifts that he's given you guys. And uh, in your particular fields, he's got you well matched up with uh, opportunities and uh, can tell the excitement. And I'm looking forward to watching the trajectory of the, of your work in both AC and Intel. Uh, just exciting stories across the board there. So keep us posted. Uh, you guys do a pretty good job at uh, blogging and letting us know what's going on in those areas. Keep that keep that up and uh, we'll be checking in to see what kind of cool technologies uh, you've God has enabled you to kind of find and, and put in place. That's awesome. Thanks so much for your work and your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for making this uh, podcast possible. I think it's really important for the, the wells. And um, I hope that more people continue to find you and listen. Thank you. Awesome. We do too. So, <laughs> thanks, you guys. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you, John and Grace, for your time. Um, and blessings on your continued work. Sally, I think that's uh but that's how technology kind of should work, right? <laughs> as you as you try and figure out what what the the tool, the right tool for the job is and not be afraid to to move on or move away from or figure out something new and and put it in place. Absolutely, Martin. And you know what really struck me, I didn't say it during the interview was they were talking about back in the old days how they mm -hmm. used to do it and how they're doing it now. And we were actually part of the old days. We interviewed we were. missionary Mike Cartman when he was setting up Academia Cristo and when they were beginning to make all these connections and being kind of overwhelmed by all the connections they were making through Academia Cristo. It's just really exciting that here just on Wells Tech, we've seen um, that change over time with technology tools, as you said, to fit the job and change um, with the needs as they arise. So really cool connections there. Excellent. Yep. So continued blessings on your work, John and, and Grace, and we look forward to catching up with you and see how, see how things are going. Uh, that's exciting work. Let's move on to our ministry resource. And we got a ton of them here, Sally. Sure enough, it's going to be a busy summer in Wells World, and we just wanted to highlight all the events that are happening this summer. Um, most of them, I think, are available for registration at this point, so it's time to to head over to your browser and click all those links on the Wells Tech uh, blog posts that we put out to get to all these great events, uh, starting with Taste of Missions. I don't know how many years it's been, maybe four or five that they've mm -hmm. been doing Taste of Missions. Um, it's an event that's held each summer. It's a one-day event at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. And the Taste of kind of comes from um, some food trucks and some things that are food. part of yeah. the event that give you um, – a taste of what this worldwide food is that we're uh, serving with our missions. But the focus of the day is really on um, the work of the missionaries, home and world missionaries. Um, it always ends with a commissioning service where a whole bunch of new missionaries are sent out into the field. So lots of um, exciting things that always happen at at Taste of Missions. So you'll want to mm -hmm. be a part of that. Um, you can register online. I think the day is $15 if you're age 13 or above. And it's free if you want to do it virtually. So you can register for the virtual event as well. So check that out at tasteofmissions.com. But don't stop there. There's more to come. Uh, Wells Youth Rally is happening this summer, also in June, um, this time in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, at Colorado State University, they're going to be meeting up with thousands of youth from across the Senate, um, June 25th through 28th. And, you know, I was saying to someone just recently, 
um, maybe their child has the opportunity to go or something like this is the one event that I haven't experienced with Wells out of all of these things Mm -hmm. I would just love to be a youth (laughs) and go to the youth rally because it looks like it would be so much fun and there's really kind of a small window of opportunity to attend it as a youth because um, the age requirements and things you kind of age out over a few years and they only have this maybe sign up for the youth rally it's a it's a challenging thing to coordinate in your own congregation because um, you have to have the right number of chaperones and chaperones for each sex you know male and female and so make sure you get out there and check out all the resources and things um, ahead of time also that same week actually june 27th through 30th there's going to be a meetup a special meetup of wells women, especially at the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society annual convention. It's going to be held in Sioux Falls, South Dakota this year, and um, that's really a pretty close drive for people in the Midwest to get to at least. It's kind of central for people from out west and down south to get to as well. So um, make your plans to attend LWMS annual convention with a focus on missions. Uh, Wells Women's conference is happening sponsored by the Wells Women's Ministry um, July 28th through 30th and this one's happening right near Senate headquarters in Pewaukee, Wisconsin and so um, 28th through 30th it actually is a precursor to the worship conference you could come to the Milwaukee area and be able to attend both if you're if you so desire Um, lots of breakout sessions lots of exciting things happening with Wells Women's Ministry so check out that registration July 28th through 30th. Oh, wow. There's just so many. Uh, The National Conference on Worship, Music, and the Arts. This is kind of a a huge highlight to be part of this worship conference happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin at Carthage College, July 30th through August 2nd. So like I said, you could do both of those. They're they're kind of back to back. There'll be special musicians, special choirs, um, a children's choir. They're actually looking for choir members. So if you're able to um, join your voice in song, you can sign up for that. Um, just all kinds of exciting things happening uh, at the Wells Worship Conference, Worship Music and the Arts. And then I also wanted to make mention of Hearts and Hands, which is kind of a, a offset group that's not part of uh, Synod specifically, but also doing amazing things with artistic endeavors and wells, all kinds of artistic endeavors. And this summer, they're having kind of some mini events. They're having workshops um, in June and July, oh, and even going into August. Um, in De-, De Pere, Wisconsin, they're having songwriting workshop and storytelling workshops. In Mankato here, they're having a visual storytellers workshop. And then finally in August in Seattle, a songwriting workshop West. So um, if you are interested in any of those, there's information on their website where you can sign up to to get information when their registration opens. So check those out. And then finally for summer, there's always opportunity to take courses through Martin Luther College. um, And you can find their face-to-face courses that are happening all over the country from California to Florida and all in between. Uh, The Martin Luther College staff is gonna be on the road um, delivering some conference, some some classes there um, on the road. And then they have their full selection of summer courses available to to browse and pick from as well. So we'll have a link to the MLC summer registration page uh, in the show notes as well. And man, I'm tired now, Martin. I think that does it. (laughs) Yeah, the uh, those links will be important for you, and now is the time to start scheduling that out because uh, some of those fill up too. So you want to make sure that you've got your seat, mm-hmm. and um, they're all over the country and uh, for all different uh, shapes and sizes of folks. So it's uh, important to kind of pick your favorite and and uh, get involved. That's neat. It's yeah. uh, it's so nice to have this kind of routine back uh, when we weren't doing this, you know, during a few years back, just mm-hmm. struggling to find uh, ways or uh, means to get together, and we were all virtual and whatever. So these are these conferences are super nice to just to to meet with people, talk with people, pray with people. It's 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 pretty neat. Very invigorating for sure. Are you yeah. going to make it to any of them this summer, Martin? I'm not sure yet. Um, 
still considering. My summer is is a little Swiss cheesy at this point, but uh, <laughs> I have been to at least a closing worship of youth rally, and it was it was neat. It was out in it's in Iowa, I think Ames, Iowa. Yeah, I believe. Kevin went uh, to that one. Yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to our picks of the week, Sally. And I have a pick, um, kind of a personal need <laughs> that I filled <laughs> this week with a drawing uh, software online called Draw.io. Draw.io, um, and it is useful for drawing all kinds of charts and things. So if you need to document a process, if you need to lay out a, a organization Org chart, chart, yeah, mm -hmm. um, whatever you might need to do, um, this is a tool that can do that. Unfortunately, there's a whole lot of tools that can do that, and it's hard to find the one that fits your needs. And I'll tell you precisely why this one fits my needs. It allows you to store your file yourself. So you can store the file you create in your Google Drive if you want, or in your OneDrive if you're a Microsoft person, or even locally on your own computer. And you know, I'm all about cloud. I love the cloud interface with Draw.io, all of that. But um, if you get locked into a service like this, um, you can kind of uh, lose your authority over your files, or you might um, meet up with some of their pricing um, mm -hmm. restrictions or whatever it might be. Most recently, I've used Lucidchart, and I'm a huge fan, but it's kind of pricey. And they'll let you create three, <laughs> and those three are kind of restricted with how many things you can put in your um, your drawings that you make. So if your drawing is very elaborate, you'll hit a you know kind of a barrier there that you can't add any more to your drawing. And that was a real problem for me. And the other problem was sharing my files with my teammates and this ability to store it in a shared location is just huge. Um, another thing that they say on their um, homepage is that files created in 2005 with draw.io will still load today. And I don't think there's a, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of these, you know, especially these cloud-based tools that have developed over the most recent 10 to 15 years or whatever, they've changed so much over time that it's yeah. hard to have that consistency. So I'm feeling good about draw.io. I also like the price tag. It's free and they don't put any limits on how many things I can put in my images and that fit my need perfectly. So that's awesome. my recommendation for today. Yeah, a couple of years back, I switched to this for my web design class with uh, Amazing Grace Virtual Academy. We were using um, Balsamic, which was is another diagramming tool, uh, mostly for wireframing. And then uh, that just got too difficult, and there was a price and was not was very proprietary. You couldn't export it really to anything. So this was a natural selection and, and and versatile too. You can not just do diagrams as you mentioned, but you can do wireframes and, and the like. So yeah, it's a good all purpose tool. So nice find. Yeah, and that portability is important. So cool. For sure. All right, my pick. Um, seems like I I do a, a to-do list pick uh, like every other week. It, that's not true, but uh, I have a to-do <laughs> list pick, and it's called Todoist. Todoist has been around a long, long time, actually. And I've uh, kind of settled into this. I think the last time I was in your neck of the woods, Sally, maybe even recording from your home, we had a to-do-focused show uh, or task management show, and I uh, was singing the praises of Microsoft to do, and I still like it, um, but it is not uh, super flexible if you live outside, in some respects, of the Microsoft ecosystem, too. Todoist is kind of all things to all people, and that's why I like it. It, it, it works great on an iPhone or an Android phone. It works great on the web there's apps on on Mac and Windows, um, and it is just enough. It has just enough sophistication that it meets most of your needs. There is a free version. Uh, it does have some limitations about the number of projects that you can have. It does kind of categorize your to dos by project. Uh, one of the nice things about it is its natural language capabilities, so you can essentially tell it, uh, say, call mom tomorrow at 2 p.m. And it will essentially put that on your 
to-do list. It can integrate with calendars, a Google calendar specifically. So if you say, write a, or, you know, write a monthly report on Monday from one to two, it will uh, sync up with your calendar and then you'd have that time block squared away on your calendar as well. So kind of uh, takes a lot of the friction out of task management. It has a good reminder system. It has subtasks. You can attach files. You can email to it. Um, there's a calendar view. There's different ways to view it. Um, just a nice set of tools. Like I say, it's been around a long time. It's a, it's a mature product. Uh, if you want to step up to the next level beyond beginner, that gives you more projects, more filters. Uh, it does do, uh, I don't think you get reminders in the free version, but with the pro version, uh, I think it's about, I think it's four bucks a month. Yeah, you've got it there on screen. Um, and so you've got a little bit more capabilities with it, but it's a, it's a, a very full featured product. It has integration with almost every tool. So every calendar, most email system, so you can attach it. There's a Gmail um, plugin, so to speak, where you can send emails to it and sync things up with it. Um, collaboration, if you're into that, if you're working on a team, you can do that as well. Uh, just all kinds of uh, nice features that are not um, uh, unnecessary. They don't get in your way. So it's uh, actually a very good product. It's not flashy. I would say it's not the prettiest program in the world, uh, but it has light and dark mode and you have some customization with some accent colors, but uh, ultimately it does what it's supposed to do. And uh, that's uh, that's all I was looking for. So I've been super happy with it. I've been using it for the past month and a half or so. And um, it, it really is fitting my needs at this point. So that's my pick, to do S T O D O I S T. Okay, I'm going to start the clock and see when the yep. next time it is that you pick mm -hmm. something different. Right. <laughs> but maybe you won't. Maybe this one will be the one that I hope I don't because it's, it's kind of painful to switch. Uh, I not can quite imagine. as painful as some other things, but I think... Uh, it's it's nice to stick with something, and this this uh, this has just the right level of of uh, pragmatic approach to 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 task management, and that's all it does. It does it's not kind of the Swiss Army knife, and you know it's not a notes tool, and it's not a calendaring tool, although it does integrate with those things. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. All right, Sally, let's move on to community news and feedback. Yep. I got the first you one here. Why don't I mm -hmm. talk about Apple Podcasts? I was kind of excited to see this and uh, my enthusiasm dulled a little bit as I delved a little bit more into it. But basically, Apple Podcasts does transcription for podcasts. So I looked up our Wells Tech podcast. I subscribed. I don't reuse it day in and day out. But uh, Apple Podcasts is actually a credible podcast tool. And maybe you're listening to us right now on Apple Podcasts and you'll you can see a transcript of our conversation. That's the tool with the latest iOS update, whatever number we're at, 17.4 or something like that. Uh, they allow uh, or they automatically transcribe audio podcasts. So if you look in your app, you can see uh, what we said. And it's actually pretty accurate. I mean, there's words that we use that you know it doesn't pick up on and uh, maybe it's not as good with my California accent or Sally's uh, Mississippi <laughs> accent. But, uh, <laughs> you said that. <laughs> um, but it, do it does a pretty good job. What I was kind of excited about as well, maybe we could use this to just cut and paste or copy everything that they did for us <laughs> and plug it into the website so that we'd have a transcription or at least some way for you to read what we said without having to go through you know, the multiple hoops uh, that it would take to actually do that in, in some other way. But sadly not. You can search it in the tool, but if you try and copy everything, it just gives you a little excerpt and a link back to the to the podcast engine itself or the podcast tool itself. So, oh well. But it that? is it is kind of cool if you want to search for something or you knew it was someplace in the you know conversation and if you search for a keyword like Todoist or draw IO, you could search for that and find out what we said about it. So pretty cool. I wonder how it would do with Langyap. You think it can transcribe uh, that? Well, we're going to find <laughs> out next week. Yes. <laughs> a little Cajun 
term for you there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. We got something else here in community news and feedback, Sally. Right. This is um actually uh, shared with you and mine, Martin, because I'm not sure you've heard of Smartsheet. Have you? No, think so. How Tell about, about that? It. This is a project management um, tool that is, mm. I, I would say, probably most similar to Trello, okay. but kind of to-do list and that kind of thing. But they call it Smartsheet, and you can use it for free up to a point, and they're across all different platforms and all kinds of things like that. But a, just kind of a visual way, it'll turn things into Gantt charts and show things on calendars and that kind of thing. Very similar, I think, to Trello, but an alternative and maybe it's better who knows i have per no personal experience with it but i did hear about it through a friend that was using it at their work and i thought it was worth checking out and looking at pricing and things like that i'm not sure how it compares exactly to trello but um if you're looking to get started maybe this is one that you evaluate um as a mm -hmm. project management tool for sure yeah, i was talking to somebody sheet. the other day oh, yes. singing the praises of, of trello um that tool is so flexible. I mean, it's hard it's to true. imagine something that can, can do what it can do. So pretty cool. All right. Uh, I think that's going to about do it, Sally. Next week, actually. Um, well, I don't know when we're publishing it, probably in a couple of weeks. But we are joined again by Jason Schmidt and uh, Rachel Feld to talk about the AI classroom. Uh, you cannot... Uh, not hear about this AI thing because it's everywhere. It's in your tools. Uh, it's in your word. It's in your, um, you know, your, your Googles it's, it's everywhere. So, uh, I'm interested to see how we continue through this book where it talks about AI in education and how our teachers can, can make use of this and our students too. So, we're going to be taking chapters eight and nine, if you're following along at home, Universal Design for Language, UDL, and Tools for the Classroom. So, sounds exciting. Yeah, I, I was reflecting on it. It seems like a long time ago that we started this book uh, review. Mm -hmm. It was last fall when the school year started. But yep. I bet a lot has changed even from when they wrote this book. And, oh, I know. You yeah. know, just like you said, it's just evolving. It seems like every day there's new things with AI. Google um, has changed the name of their AI uh, tool for the third time, I think, in the, in the course of <laughs> been reading this book. So There you go. Yeah, so, so. Ever-changing. Tune in to see to what's that. new. Sally, if people want to find out what we're doing, where should they go? Well, we have a website. It's wellstech.wells.net. And on that site, you can get access to all of our past 720 podcasts. Um, you can contact us with through the links provided there. There's all kinds of social media, as well as an option to send us a voicemail. You can even send us an old-fashioned email, wellstech at wells.net. Find it all at wellstech.wells.net. We do read our email yep, still. So... Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're so glad you decided to, to spend a little bit of your time with us. We certainly appreciate that. And uh, bring your friends next time, and we'll talk about a little AI for you. Uh, have a blessed uh, Lenten journey as we continue toward that uh, cross and the empty tomb. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.